It will soon be presented to the Senate and the American people, a great decision that will determine the fate of the United States, and I think, therefore, the fate of the world, for generations to come. There can be no middle ground here. We shall have to take the responsibility for world collaboration. Or we shall have to bear the responsibility for another world conflict. And I am confident that the Congress and the American people will accept the results of this conference as the beginnings of a permanent structure of peace. The Yalta Conference was a pivotal event in history that displayed conflict and compromise through the re-establishment of connections between war-torn countries after World War II, the ability of the world leaders to agree on the fate of the post-war world despite their own conflicting agendas, and the collaboration of the Soviet Union with the United States and Great Britain even though they were once foes. With Europe on the brink of a major war, Soviet Union dictator Joseph Stalin and German Chancellor Adolf Hitler shocked the world by signing a non-aggression pact, agreeing not to invade each other for the next 10 years. Just nine days later, on September 1st, 1939, Germany invades Poland. British and French forces respond by declaring war on Germany. By 1940, Germany has taken over most of Western Europe. Soon after, Germany, Japan, and Italy signed the Tripartite Pact and named themselves the Axis Alliance. With so much power, Adolf Hitler feels he can defeat the Soviet army. The Axis Alliance attacks with over 4 million people on June of 1941 with no success. After this, the Soviet Union and Germany became fierce opponents. They battled for years, diminishing each other's military strength and Germany's ability to defend its fronts. At this point, the United States is still not involved. This changes, however, when Japan launches the Pearl Harbor attack on Hawaii. From this, the United States enters the war on the side of Great Britain and France, who name themselves the Allies. It is now December 1944, and Germany has lost to the Allies in the biggest invasion on the Western Front. Shortly after the loss, the Soviet Union decides to join the Allies to help finalize the end of Hitler's reign. With Hitler's surrender imminent, the three Allied powers, President Franklin D. Roosevelt of the United States, Prime Minister Winston Churchill of Great Britain, and dictator Joseph Stalin of the Soviet Union converge and decide the fate of the post-war world. Stalin was the most conflicted of the three. He was once at war with the United States and Great Britain, and he was not completely trusted by them. But if the Soviets were able to execute the compromises made at this conference, then the United States and Great Britain will deem them as faithful allies. The Big Three set up a series of three major meetings. The first being the conference in Tehran, Iran. They discussed three main points that included a large front on the crumbling German Empire, the Soviet Union's possible inclusion in the war against Japan, and the idea of the United Nations, or UN, which would be used to keep peace in the world after World War II. The second meeting was the largest, most influential, and controversial of the three. It was officially named the Crimea Conference and was also known as the Yalta Conference. The meeting occurred at the Montgomery House in the Levita Palace on the Crimean Peninsula. The fate of all the conflicted countries rested upon the compromises made here. The mood was tense. The three most powerful people in the world met on February 4, 1945. And although they all wanted to resolve the issues revolving around Nazi Germany, they also each brought their own agenda. Great Britain wanted to keep land in their empire. Stalin wanted to expand his, while the United States wanted to ensure that the Soviet Union would take part in the fight against Japan, as well as obtain a promise from Stalin saying he would participate in the creation of the United Nations. The three nations did not agree on many things, but they did know their common enemy. Germany. They were determined to find a way to end Hitler's reign and build a more peaceful world. They decided that they would first need to reorganize Germany. Each country was hungry for land to expand their empire, particularly Stalin. 
At first, Stalin suggested five zones. Churchill had suggested two zones. And by the end of the conference, they settled upon four zones. Each nation would get control over one and France over the fourth. Finally, the big three decided that Germany needed to pay a compensation for damage caused by the war to each allied country. Next, to ensure future peace in the world, the three chose to start an international organization for peace and security. They argued for days over this new group, which would be called the United Nations, or UN. This group would mainly be controlled by the United States, Great Britain, the Soviet Union, France, and China. The leaders said the United Nations was essential to prevent aggression and stop the political, economical, and social causes of war. The next topic of discussion was liberating Europe. The Allies worked together during the time of instability in Europe to aid each country in the beginnings of a democratic government. They made the following statement. The establishment of order in Europe and the rebuilding of national economic life must be achieved by processes which will enable the liberated people to destroy the last vestiges of Nazism and fascism and to create democratic institutions of their own choice. This will help the liberated people establish conditions of internal peace, carry out emergency measures for the relief of distressed people, and offer free elections. Although up to this point, the nations had agreed on most decisions, the fate of Poland is where they differed. The Soviet Union said that their demands for Poland were non-negotiable. Stalin wanted to gain land from Western Poland while Poland took more territory from Eastern Germany, driving out millions of Germans. Joseph Stalin stated, In the Soviet Union, the question of Poland is not only a question of honor, but also a question of security. Throughout history, Poland has been the corridor through which the enemy has passed into the Soviet Union. Poland is a question of life and death for the Soviet Union. With this, the other leaders made Stalin agree, reluctantly, to allowing Poland to partake in free elections. As time went on, it became increasingly clear he was not going to keep this promise. Along with Poland, they also talked about Yugoslavia, a country invaded by Hitler that had a large population of Germans who still believed in the Nazi ideals and a strong central government. To combat this, the Yugoslav parliament was offered positions in the anti-fascist assembly of national liberation. The final country the politicians discussed was Japan. One of the main reasons Roosevelt took part in this conference was because he wanted Stalin to agree to eventually take part in the Pacific War. The Soviets agreed to enter the war within 90 days after Germany's surrender but Stalin required a portion of land Japan would lose. From the beginning of becoming allies, Churchill and Roosevelt had suspicions regarding Stalin, but thought it best to count him as an ally rather than a foe. And if that held to be true, then the meeting would have been viewed as very successful to amending the world and restoring peace after conflict. But the Soviets failed to keep most of their promises and compromises. As Edward R. Statinius, the Secretary of State who was present at the Yalta Conference states, It is not Yalta that is a trouble with the world today, but subsequent failures to adhere to the policies Yalta stood for and to carry out agreements that were reached there. Difficulties have developed, not from the agreements reached at Yalta, but from the failure of the Soviet Union to honor those agreements. He also states, I firmly believe that when all the evidence is in, and when the conference is seen in its proper perspective, Yalta will become a symbol, not of appeasement, but of a wise and courageous attempt by President Roosevelt and Prime Minister Churchill to set the world on a road of lasting peace. Overall, the Yalta Conference is a tremendous display of negotiation and communication between the three allied countries. For a war, the big three felt so very passionate in ending and spreading peace for our children and grandchildren.